Hello, this is a virtual microscopic slide of a length of colon, and this is a case of Hirschsprung disease. On the right is the distal end, and on the left is the proximal end. So the distal segment is abnormal, and this lacks the presence of ganglion cells, and the proximal half is normal with the presence of normal ganglion cells in the submucosal as well as the myenteric nerve plexuses. For a quick recap of the layers of the wall of the large bowel, here is the mucosa, the submucosa in which the submucosal nerve plexus is seen, the muscularis propria with the two layers of muscle, longitudinal and transverse, and in between the two layers is where we see the myenteric nerve plexus, and this is the subserosal tissue within which we can see a few lymph nodes. Let's first look at the normal proximal segment. And let's focus on the submucosal nerve plexus. We can see here a small nerve twig with some of these larger polygonal cells. These cells have eccentric, very round, large nuclei and some of the nuclei contain a small but prominent nucleolus. These cells also have very abundant amphophilic cytoplasm. Amphophilic means somewhere between pink and blue, so a little bit pale purplish. And these are what ganglion cells look like. These are normal, and we would expect to see them in both the submucosal as well as the myenteric nerve plexuses. Here again, we have another small nerve twig another one here and over here again we can see the presence of some of these very distinctive ganglion cells moving downwards into the myenteric plexus we would expect to see it here between the two layers of smooth muscle and over here again we can see very clearly the presence of ganglion cells there is another one here as well as here and here. Hirschsprung disease is also known as congenital aganglionic megacolon, and this really means that there is a distal segment of the rectum that is devoid of ganglion cells. So here is the abnormal segment. This is usually very small in diameter and shrunken because of functional obstruction, and the proximal normally innervated segment is usually dilated due to the obstruction. So again, we're going to look in the submucosal nerve plexus, and here we can see some small nerve twigs. Again here, another one here. We can recognize them by the pale color and also by the presence of spindle cells. These are Schwann cells. And we do not see any ganglion cells. Here again are all the nerve twigs. And also often in these segments of aganglionic large bowel, we see the presence of hypertrophic nerve bundles, which we can see here, they are more prominent than normal. Now moving downwards into the myenteric plexus, again in this region, we can see these small nerve bundles. And there's a little nerve twig here and another one here. And as expected, we do not see any ganglion cells here again, some of the hypertrophic nerve bundles, but complete absence of ganglion cells, hence aganglionosis. We can also use a particular immunohistochemical marker to help us to identify these ganglion cells, and this is known as calretinin. And here is the section that is stained with calretinin antibody, and this is the abnormal segment, this is the normal segment, and already at this low magnification we can see some dark brown positive staining regions in the submucosal nerve twigs and also in the myenteric plexus. And if we zoom in, these very plump cells are actually the ganglion cells and these are the nerve twigs. Both are positive for calretinin. And similarly, in the myenteric plexus, we can see these nerve 
twigs or nerve bundles that are positive, and also ganglion cells. In contrast, in the abnormal area, there is no pickup of calretinin and we do not see any obvious ganglion cells, either in the submucosal or the myenteric plexus. Let's have a very quick recap of the gross appearance. And here is what an example of a gross specimen of a colon in a patient with Hirschsprung disease looks like with the very narrow affected aganglionic segment and the very dilated proximal segment. This is taken from our virtual pathology museum in our online web resource, PathWeb. You can register for free. The link is in the video description and you can have full access to our virtual pathology museum. And you can also find a separate video highlighting the gross features here. In summary, this is a microscopic section of a case of Hirschsprung disease and we are looking at the distal rectum on the right and moving proximally towards the left. The right distal segment shows aganglionosis where we can see hypertrophic nerve twigs or nerve bundles but a complete absence of ganglion cells both in the submucosal as well as in the myenteric plexus. And in contrast, in the normal proximal segment of colon, we can see the presence of ganglion cells both in the submucosal nerve plexus as well as the myenteric nerve plexus. Thank you.